It's exciting for you know our whole group. I mean, we uh, you know you, you kind of thrive under that playing in front of a full building, especially with the energy we've had and uh, obviously yesterday and, and today. So uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. November, Tri-City hits the fourth leg of their East Division road trip with a stop in Saskatoon. Although the past few years haven't gone their way, the Americans feel poised for a breakout season. We've, we've gotten better at competing for 60 minutes. Um, I give the boys a lot of credit. They've really worked hard and they've really tried to uh, you know, stick to the game plan. We're definitely getting some points on the board, which is really nice. And I think this, uh, this road trip is definitely, definitely helping us as a group. And we're, uh, we're going to get, we're, we're starting to heat up, so I think we're going we're gonna to be hot this year. Franchise owner and head coach Stu Barnes has held just about every position in hockey at the pro and junior level. A former fourth overall pick in the NHL draft, he sees the potential of promising young defenseman Lucas Dragasevic. Well, I think his, his fire for the game, his passion for the game, I think he really wants to be a difference maker almost at any given night. Um, he's a guy that wants to score, wants to uh, contribute offensively. He's an individual, a person that, that uh, you know, does really well as far as uh, learning and growing and trying to work on his game and trying to round out his game. And I think that's a positive when you have a young guy that's willing to take uh, advice and work on his game and try to round it out. I think uh, that's a positive. Okay, not a lot of uh, power plays last night, guys, obviously, right? So we just had the one. We had some good opportunities. We'll go from there. So not a lot of video on us. Take a look at them real quick. A couple times <clears throat> throughout their game here, they did a couple different things. All right, here they're just like a flat one three, because this guy's not moving a whole bunch. If we can get him shifted in one direction, come back the other direction, then we got an opportunity to get the zone and go from there. All right, all right. So make sure we're sharp there. Make sure that when we're traveling up the ice, that our drop guys have enough distance. If the pass goes wrong, that they can at least build speed and make sure they get that puck and be able to cross when he gets there. Okay. D zone draws. Okay. Pressure coming hard off the face off here. That first forward, watch, he's going to turn the corner and he's going to press down here. So we got to have relief from the bumper in the middle of the ice here and down low, okay? Backside guy, be available here as well if it starts to slide down here. So if this is a righty that drops down into here, you may have some shot options. You got to start high here, turn that corner, you may be able to go back behind his heels or back across the backside, okay? But be aware. You can turn the light on real quick. <clears throat> Again, breakouts are going to be key. We get in the zone, we get set up. Okay, run our routes. Guys are in different spots tonight, so make sure you know your routes. If you have any questions, find me before the before the uh, puck drops and make sure you know what's going on. All right, okay. these guys are going to work for it. We got to make sure that we we match the work. Okay. On the other side, the pride of McBride, BC, Tanner Molendyke enters his third season with the blue and yellow. While he might not have the same point total as fellow BC or Dragasevic, his skating is what catches the eye. He's special. He's, uh, his skating is unbelievable. Um, it's pretty easy to play with. Um, yeah, his puck skills are, are off the charts as well. Like just the little subtle plays he makes is, uh, is phenomenal. And, um, makes my job a lot easier as well. When you're an elite skater and you can carry the pace of play and you can evade four checkers and you can break pucks out clean, you're just giving your team an advantage. Coming into tonight's matchup, Saskatoon finds himself in third place in the Eastern Conference. Losing the likes of Tristan Robbins and Kyle Krinkovic in the offseason, the team has relied on depth to contribute. And in the Wednesday night contest, it would be no different. Right wing, Lazowski in over the line. Lazowski in front, three back, they score! Hi, oh, let's go in, Delagrosanier! Despite a first filled with puck possession, the Blades only lead by one. This period, we're trapping them on the ice, man, because we're going so fast. They don't get line changes this period. We're just going to cook them in their own water, okay? Uh, make sure we're hitting the net. I think there's a little too much respect that we need to go bar down against this guy, and I really don't believe that. I really don't believe that. I think we got to hit the net and it's quantity. And I think there's going to be rebounds. The other guy started every game on their trip. This is the first start he's had. So I don't think we need to go bar down and pick our spots and shoot it over the net. I just think we got to hit the net. You just can absolutely roll them if we spend time in the offensive zone this period. They can't change. We're trapping them all the period. Here we go. Yo. The Blades would dominate the next 40, adding one goal after another. A point shot from Tanner Molendyke tipped in front would push the lead to 5-0.
Back to the line. A shot by Molnick, shot scores! Lebu in front! Pressing to break the goose egg, Lukas Dragasevic shows what makes him so special. To Dragasevic, blades directing traffic, looking, and a shot and a goal by Dragasevic! The first goal of the game for the Americans would be too little, too late, and the Blades would skate to a 5-1 victory on home ice. And time will run out, and that is it. The Saskatoon Blades come home, and they knock off the Tri-City Americans. So I'm, I'm giving my jersey away? Yeah, yeah, so you have to jersey. Jersey. I want to keep this thing. And you take it off, you'll get another one. Okay. <laughs> Shout out, winner! That was the best game of the year. Yeah. 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 Shout out, Molly! You were game tonight. Shout out, Rebs! Hey, yeah. first one. Yeah. Shout out, Dog! PK, you did the job against the best power play in the league. Well done. 0 for 3. That's what I like to see. Well, that's enough for me. Who's got the axe? Okay, boys. Good effort. Uh, this guy's buzzing all night. He's going a wiener. Working with my educational advisor in Victoria, Tammy Ranyard, we made, made sure that I hit all my deadlines. And one really interesting thing about the Athabasca course was I actually got called up to the East Coast Hockey League after my 19-year-old season was done in Victoria. And I still had a couple assignments left to, uh, to do. And what enabled me, what the Athabasca course enabled me to do was to actually still work on that while I was in Ontario, California, playing for the rain um, and finish my course by, by the summer. So the flexibility of it was something that very much appealed to me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm super, super happy I made the decision to go to the WHL and, uh, you know, I was super lucky to, to land in Regina. It's just so cool to kind of look at, look at all the names on the wall of this historic franchise, obviously, and uh, to have my name there is, is really special. But Arzaloni scores! You know, it's such a first-class organization there and uh, I've been able to kind of enhance my development, I think, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I've really enjoyed it and I'm happy that, uh, you know, I decided to go the Western, Western route. So this is the community rink that he played out of. It was the Crescent Heights Community Club in Prince Albert. We had the opportunity for, I think, I want to say it was January 23rd, 2014, and we had three Raiders come out to the minor hockey practice, and just so happened with that, in with the Raiders, we had Josh Morrissey and Leon Drysaddle and then Captain Sawyer Lang come out. So uh, that was pretty, that was pretty special. It was, uh, there was some uh, attention issues on the development that day, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, I think I was seven, seven or eight maybe, and um, they came to uh, one of our practices and we did a little, little like all-star uh, competition and some of those things that they do at the NHL. And, um, it was like super cool, like just something that I'll always remember. Now a WHL player and potential first round NHL draft pick himself, Braden Yeager strives to give back to his community. From donating gear to the youth that can't afford it, to donating his time to help minor hockey players get better, the same way Leon and Josh did for him nine years ago. I know that Braden has mentioned it before as well, that that, that left such an impression on him that practice day, and, and he, I think, is really motivated not to forget where he came from and, and recognize the impact that that had and, and to kind of pay that forward, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you look at hockey and it's, you know, becoming, um, you know, a lot better at inclusion and, um, you know, you look at, uh, you know, all the, all the families that, you know, can't really afford hockey and, um, you know, it's, I think it's just um, nice to, you know, give them, give them a chance to play hockey because it's, you know, such a great sport and, um, you know, you make so many friends and, um, you know, th through the, through the whole, uh, through the whole process and just uh, being able to have fun and, and play a sport that uh, you know you could love and um, yeah so I think it's you know something I'm pretty proud of is giving giving them a chance to play hockey so yeah. The Jaegers made the decision to further Braden's development moving him to the Martinsville Marauders to play up in age group. It's always um, disappointing to see them leave home but I mean they need to that's what their dream is so you know, in order to achieve that, that's what the things they have to do, so. 
It was along that minor hockey journey he would meet a lifelong friend in Riley Height. Riley is like a third son to us and, you know, Braden is adopted by the, the Heights as well. So, I mean, that, they have a unique relationship where they, they, they're like brothers and spent so much time together. The boys have been such close friends yeah. for, for so long that it's just, it's so nice to see them do it together and see them both, you know, achieving and having, you know, success with their own teams and uh, it's pretty exciting times. We're obviously, everyone knows we're pretty tight, I think, just uh, growing up, we, we, we kind of bonded, not even just on, a, on the hockey level, we were so obviously good buddies right away and, uh, you know, him coming, he, he moved to Saskatoon at a really young age, so I think, uh, you know, it's just been going on ever since. We've been close and, and training the summer with each other and stuff, so yeah, it's obviously been special. Um, obviously with Heider, I've been playing with him since I was maybe eight or nine, so uh, and obviously we we're both from Saskatoon and uh, kind of gone through the whole minor hockey thing together and kind of just do everything together almost. So to go through this with them is uh, it's pretty special. Wow, wings out, eh? Hey, let's go, boys. Hey, are we short of sentiment or what? Top right. Ah, oh, you read it. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Nice, Ferky. I forgot pills call the sick day. I forgot pills call the sick day, so we're shorter forward. Oh, healthy. Hey, you playing today? Yeah. You playing today? Yeah. Really? You still high far side, five one viewers or what? I got. We'll see, buddy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. On the plank. yeah. I'll see you on the plank, seriously. Oh, it's a pretty good warming. It's Jaeger and Sorensen for the opening draw. Puck is down and we are underway. A first glance at the two teams' records would suggest two different stories. A Warriors team trending to be a top contender in the Eastern Conference, while the Raiders are still in retool mode after loading up for their 2019 WHL Championship. Since a playoff series against each other in 2016, and more notably a seven game series in 2018, the two make it tough on one another every time they hit the ice, no matter the standings. Oh, that's sick dude, two years in the dub, that's all you're gonna get, good job, buddy. With the score nodded at two, Seattle Kraken prospect Jagger Fergus breaks the game open. Short-handed rush, Fergus up the left side, walks in, shoots, scores! Jagger Fergus short-handed. The Raiders would continue their attack, but Moose Jaw holds their ground to escape with a close 3-2 win. Kozier fires it on goal, hit the linesman, and time will expire. Oh! Hell yeah, man! Yeah! Get your water, get your rest, let's go up and eat, we'll go home. We'll talk about the schedule for tomorrow, but can we do it tomorrow? After the game, some much needed family time for the Jaggers. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. How's it going? Good game. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank you. Hey, honey. Good game. Thank you. We had a lot of like little two on one plays, like lots of little chances. But Hilti played pretty good. Yeah. Well, kept the minute in the first eight yeah. minutes. Yeah, Ferky was telling me when uh, he lifted his stick, they all booed him. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you guys let get you go. going. Good Thank game. you. Thank you. Love you. Travel safe. Love you too, honey. You guys drive oh, safe too. Thanks for coming. Best of luck. With drive safe. You miss it. Yeah. See you later. See ya. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You too. Oh yeah. Keep working. Yeah. Short-handed right wing. Yater shot. Score! Jäger Bob! Wormald home free to the net, scores! What a pass, what a goal! And for Johanniak a drive off a couple of bodies, loose on the side, and Vikeman gets to its left. It's Pagnoni with a move, Pagnoni shoots, Pagnoni scores! Players who come to the Western Hockey League obviously are interested in 
pursuing their hockey careers and, and going as far in the system as they possibly can, whether that's turning professional or other opportunities that present themselves. But the scholarship program is equally important because it gives the players an opportunity to pursue their academic goals at the same time. Understanding now what the average student has to go through to graduate, um, the WHL provides or relieves you of that stress um, to allow you to succeed in the classroom. Yeah, it's uh, definitely exciting, you know, a lot of family and friends obviously, so it's my first game here, you know, just uh, just pretty pumped to, to play in front of, obviously sold out crowd and uh, just to be back home. Uh, I mean, it's been great, we've had, you know, four, four or five thousand every night and, uh, you know, it's always a lot of fun to kind of build off, build off that energy and uh, coming here, playing in away rinks, it's, uh, you know, good and, you know, people are, people are screaming at me a bit, but, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Pretty normal kid, uh, you know, played soccer and hockey and had friends and same as pretty much everybody, you know. Enjoyed, but he always enjoyed uh, playing, of course, you know, practicing and playing. I think he started skating down at the North Shore Winter Club when he was four. Um, he was always playing with a stick and puck, so I thought I better put him in put him in hockey, so I did. Well, he started working on a shot when he was, I think, five outside, and he couldn't raise the puck. He got mad about it, upset about it, and he just kept working on it until he could. So he had a pretty good shot early on uh, for his age. Like, he worked on it always. You know, he's always been working on everything. Yeah, since he was little, that's just what he's all, you know, he's wanted to do, so hopefully he keeps having fun and loves the game and, and uh, reaches all his goals. I mean, that's about all you can hope. Basically, it comes down to the player, what they want to do, how much work they want to put in. So, you got to enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. Face-offs in the offensive zone for them, 56%. In their own zone, 44. Bedard and Spencer are above 50. Everybody's below 40. So again, we want to control that face-off circle so we get possession of the puck. They do have a set play. Their set play in the offensive zone, if you see the toe caps going this way, he's going through. They want to push through and they want to create three at the net. Okay, so you guys got to recognize that. Make sure we're face-off ready and we're inside. Good? So <clears throat> we got ourselves... A huge crowd tonight. And I want you guys to enjoy this. But you've got to bring the best version of yourselves. With energy, but everything's got to be in control with purpose. i share a little story with you guys that Barkley shared with me. One of the fans came up to him in the last game and said, you know, it's so refreshing. Come and watch a team versus last year that didn't play for each other and play the right way. And that is why the people are here to watch Bedard. They want to see showtime. What they appreciate about us is the way we play the game. So play the game the right way. For the first time in his WHL career, Bedard hits the ice in his home province, and it didn't take long for him to settle in. He'll play it up the wall, intercepted, but comes to Bedard, he'll play it into the slot of the back, and it's saved by Whiteman, rebound! <laughs> Past the halfway mark in the first, NHL draft prospect Boria Vallis breaks the tie. Regina's power play is 23.2%, and in come the pass with a breakaway opportunity, and they score! His tenth of the year would be the only marker of the first, and Regina's opening 20 minutes of their road trip is a success. Okay, let's make sure from the blue line to the top of the circle we're not turning the puck over. We did it about three, four times. Just keep going back to Winnipeg. These guys aren't going to do what Zlotti and Lambos to do against you, but you're going to forecheck them better and, than you could those two guys. And we had all sorts of chances by getting the puck deep. Just know when to turn, not turn it over. Get it in. Same thing on cycles. Throw the puck at the net, and we need somebody net front there, not standing off to the side. 
All right, let's go win this period here. Let's go. Riding the coattails of the first, the Pats strike early in the middle frame. He's on the right wing into the giant zone. Bernard, round behind that, centering pass in front, and it bounces him. And eventually, it went in off a of Tanner Howe. A former Giant, goaltender Drew Sim remains perfect through two periods. Traded to the Pats last October, Sim has taken over the starting role in Regina, and he's proving why with this performance against his former team. Here's Norman across the line. He'll be no stop check. To the net, back in. Another pass saved by Sim. Late in the third, recent acquisition Sam Maremba seals the deal. Spencer on the left wing trying to get it to the net, and it goes inside of the goal. The Pats have jammed it in. Three unanswered goals and 47 stops for Drew Sim leads to a victory for the visiting Pats. Oh, it's amazing. Um, a little bit of a revenge tour. Um, I put a lot on this and I wanted to send a message, so um, I don't think I could have done it in a better way. It feels really good. Pats would look to continue their success the next night, again playing in front of a sold out crowd at the Save on Foods Memorial Center in Victoria, BC. Nobody shut the guy down in two years in the league. Yeah, that's what so I said to Dan Price. Yeah, yeah you're not going to magically do it tonight, Evan, yeah, but shut him down. if you let everybody else go wild at the same time, then you got a huge problem. That's when the game gets away on you. A back and forth first 20, with both teams capitalizing on chances, including Bedard's line mate Tanner Howe, who had a hat trick 17 minutes into this one. Still pointless with less than a minute remaining in the period, the fans got what they came to see. Connor Bedard is on the board. His point streak, 23 games. Okay, I've been saying it on the bench because we haven't been doing it. Face-offs in the neutral zone, it's 2-1-2. Keep the puck going ahead, gain a zone. You don't have to go back, put the passes on the stick, defenseman. Get the puck to the net. There's lots of traffic there. This guys in for the duration whether you get five or 15 because they got no other goalie so get the pucks to the net get around the net and don't beat yourselves that's the only way don't beat yourselves stay connected play right as it's been the case so many times before in Bedard's career when he gets you once he'll get you again Slid up the wall Pat puts it to the blue line kept in by Bateman now how sets up Bedard he scores 5-2 Regina, and Bedard has two. And a steal and a, and a goal for Bedard. He's got the hat trick. It's 7-2, Connor Bedard. Bedard and Howe would combine for 10 points against the Royals. The high scoring affair would end in the Pats favor and they'd hit the road to the Okanagan with a much needed two points. It's exciting for you know our whole group. I mean, we uh, you know you, you kind of thrive under that playing in front of a full building, especially with the energy we've had and uh, obviously yesterday and, and today. So uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. Connor Bedard and the Regina Pats played in front of 30,260 fans in the five-game BC road trip, but more importantly, they collected a crucial eight out of ten points. on the next episode of WHL Behind the Scenes 2023 Road to Nashville. We're minutes from puck drop at the Langley Event Center on the 2023 Kubota CHL-NHL Top Prospects game. Lots of Western League flavor. We'll talk about it tonight, Craig, but this is a big year for the Western Hockey League in the draft. Dude, I forgot about the second light, so I just, I wasn't even thinking about it. It's buzzing in here.